to work at the job just long enough to earn four or five dollars, enough to make uh, food lasting for a day. Then I got on the boat, which I live on, and do what I want to do. And I thought, well, what the hell with it. I'm going to sell my business, go down and live on a boat, and spend all my time there, and really do what I want to do. Mix you drink. So I did. I sold the business. Sold everything out. And I'm down here, living on the boat. I want to tell you something that happened to me the other day. I was out painting the bow of the boat. The Columbia Sightseer came up river with all 40, 50 people aboard. I was up there painting on this scaffolding ladder on the bow. Stepped back to look at my work. Just about that time they come by and I stepped back too far and went clear off the boat. Of course I did it on purpose. They turned around, came back, pulled me out of the water and bought me a drink. Only the skipper came back and said, Bob, we've got another load coming up later. Would you do that for us again? Thank you. Thank you. Now that'll hold you for a little while. <laughs> a couple minutes. Build fire for you here. Just love to build fires. Actually perfect. Pretty warm in here, but I like to use up matches. We got a lot of matches here. The uh, houseboat I had next door here before I sold it had some people in it. I had these parties all the time. I was invited to it, tired of working, so couldn't get over there. It's like singing, drinking, and dancing. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, I hear this noise up on the upper deck. And this young gal, she uh, hollering, Bob, Bob, invite me over for a drink. I'm up and away, so I figure, well, I'll invite her over for a drink. Well, she's up on the railing of the boat, trying to step across from one to the other. And of course, when you step on one railing, the boat goes one way, and the one that you're stepping on goes the other way, right down between the two boats she went. <laughs> she weighed about 155 pounds, and she wedged herself right between the boats, stuck. <laughs> the greatest thing about the whole story is, she still had the drink in her hand. She never broke the glass. We tried to get her out. Couldn't, couldn't get her out. Bob, well, this sounds like another one of your tales. Has this really happened? No, this is not true. This is a lot of his stories and it's not true. Why? Sorry, Bob. This houseboat sunk here oh two years ago when I had a couple of girls living there. And they were saved by a barking dog at three o'clock in the morning. They were gonna come over and tell me it's sinking. It's going down pretty fast. It was a barge type thing just taking out water. <laughs> Bob. They didn't want to wake me up at three o'clock in the morning. I said, well, we don't want to disturb Bob until the water got up their hips. So oh, they Bob. walked out. <laughs> no, this is this is true. This really did happen. It was in the newspapers and on TV. It was very interesting. So they tiptoed next door onto my boat and knocked on the door. He said, Bob. The houseboat is sinking. Oh. <laughs> They're in four feet of water by now. Four feet of water. But and you rescued them. After, well, I rescued them. I chained up their houseboat, and I was a hero. It was on the front page of the newspaper. And all this is true. I never tell anything unless it's true. But the funniest <laughs> thing that happened... <laughs> that story just isn't true. You've told it so many times, you believe it, you think this was two days later. A friend of mine bought a helicopter, and he's, he didn't know how to fly it. There's no way that he could fly this thing, but he had a pilot with him, and the pilot brought him over the boat, and he always wanted to land on the stern of my boat. He wouldn't let the pilot do it because he wanted to do it himself. He owned this plane. He dropped down. And before I had the railings on the deck, he dropped down here with the copter, and of course, as they come down, they veer off like a bumblebee. You know, they, there's no way that you can land on the back of a deck this size. It's a small boat, big plane. A helicopter and, you know, on your... Copter, yeah. right. About three swipes like this, he hit the boom. He veered off, and the last thing we saw, he's flying out through the air. The last thing we ever saw. Never saw the plane again, nor the man that was in it. 
You don't know if he crashed or landed or what? Well, he probably crashed and landed, but I do understand that he is still around. He doesn't own the copter anymore. The pilot <laughs> You'd think, as many lies as Bob has told, that after a while, you know, he, once in a while, he'd tell the truth, but it's it, it just consistently, you know, lies. I can't believe it. <laughs> You're really such a little boy, aren't you? You really know most of the stories are true, don't you? No, that's not true. Continue on with the story a little bit about that houseboat. Uh, I had about five escapades with that, and each one was what we call a dramatic experience. It was all involved with me. In fact, I had several phone calls calling up and accusing me of sinking the houseboat just to get the girls to come over to have a drink or spend some time over here. <laughs> and really, I didn't do that, although I was accused of it. And that's true. That isn't quite true, Bob. Tell it what it correct. is. No, it uh, caused me quite a little bit of trouble and quite a, quite a bit of publicity. As you can see out there, the houseboat is not there anymore. Why? Or nor are the girls there, or nor are the <laughs> girls aboard my boat. Someone came up and bought it from you for $3,500. Yes, I know it, and they have it in their backyard right now. No, they That's have the it down on the floor in their backyard. They've been collecting it. And they are <laughs> picked it up, and I'm ranching it. <laughs> Why didn't you just tell it like that? I uh, really don't want to continue on with the houseboat. I have so many other stories to uh, go on with here. Oh. And... Uh, <laughs> In fact, you know, I'm real happy to have you folks here listening to this because it's hard to talk to yourself and tell these stories because they are so interesting. And I've heard them so many times. <laughs> and they don't sound like true at all, but, you know, they're well, beautiful stories, Bob. As a friend of mine used to say, most of my stories are 90% true and 5% false. And I know they're 5% false and 90% untrue, Bob. And you're one of the character, Bob. I hope you think I've more weird stories than anybody I've heard. I would like to show you the boat. Thank you for a tour there. The other night, Betty and I uh, stopped in for a drink. This fellow was sitting at the bar, kept falling off of that stool there. I picked him up three times, kept handing him this drink. Fourth time, he sat down at the bottom there, and I figured, well, I'll just grab the drink off the bar and <laughs> well I just handed the drink to the stool in there and let him sit there on the floor. Well, that just isn't true. <laughs> Not best you gotta put up with it, huh? <laughs> this is the ship's galley out here. Oh Bob, it is beautiful. Really big. Just lovely. Oh look at that wonderful coffee grinder. I've been looking for one of those. It's like a regular kitchen when he's a little short. Look how big that stove is. Yeah, yeah, the guys that are six foot tall have a time. He's not a big thing. That stove's something else, too. Gee, things just, yeah, close. Bob, now that you've told so many stories already, why don't you tell a true story? It's the one about bringing the Akumaru down from Seattle. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's. Uh, why not? Something else. Something about. we can believe. That was a true story. Oh, do tell it. Been in the newspapers. It's been on radio and television. Well, well, I've been a story I've never heard. heard. I anyway. might tell it. I might tell it. It uh, could be something I'll tell you about after a while. It takes we'd like to hear it. Yeah, his arm, though. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to tell it. <laughs> I was really just watching these engines. You guys might as well come down and take a look, and I'll show you what this equipment in the engine room looks like. This is where we run the boat from down here. Got a pair of uh, 671. Uh, General Motors diesels here, developing about 500 horsepower on the shaft, six to one reduction ratio on the on the wheel back there. <laughs> Pushes the boat along pretty good. I'll start these things up and. Uh, <laughs> cruise quarters okay. for my all-girl crew, crew, I hope. Good, you got an opening. <laughs> Go outside here in the flying bridge, show you the rest of it. Yes. Hey, this isn't too bad at all. You got room for four in there. Huh. Four all zeros girls, are uh, eight doubles there. Huh? Okay. I will tell you the story about the trip coming down the coast. I contracted to bring a tug down here, down to Oregon. 
Delivery was late by about four months, which uh, put me into a winter storm. Thought I'd tow my own ship down with it. We got out the straits and hit the coast out there, and the storm started coming up with all the other problems that entered in. Then about 10 miles off Destruction Island, I got a call from my tow. We hit a log, we are taking on water, and the storm was building up. So immediately I had to call the Coast Guard, request help. We needed pumps bad. It was almost three hours before they arrived with pumps. They got two pumps aboard from the cutter and one of the Coast Guard's men aboard to help operate. A few hours, there's no way that we could uh, keep up with this, so we had to call Air Sea Rescue Seattle requesting planes to drop pumps. The seas were building up, the waves were beginning to come over the back of the vessel, swamping. Possibly more than uh, more than we're taking out is coming in over the sides, over the top of the vessel. It took about two more hours for the plane to get there to drop the uh, pumps. We got six to eight pumps going at one time, trying to keep up. This went on for possibly another day. Storm warnings went up to gale warnings. The seas were building up uh, well, approximately 20 to 30 feet high. At this time, there were almost nine ships in distress on the coast within our vicinity. Some lives have been lost. Hours and possibly another day went by. Pump still being put aboard and Coast Guard called me on the tow and said there's no way that they can uh, keep up with the water. We have over a hundred ton of water in the vessel and they uh, requested that we abandon the ship so I called Coast Guard Seattle, and their request was the same. The insurance company and the U.S. Salvage said to beach the vessel. My remarks were, I don't want to do it. Went on a few hours more. The seas and waves were building up heavier, so I thought I'd try for Westport Bar. I tried to get it in, drag it in across the bar there. Kind of wanted to save this thing. I had my crew taken off and thought I'd try to tow it in, tow it in alone. They sent a pilot boat out, looked for me to try to help me in, never did see it. Same time, I'm still trying to get in there, making about one half of a knot. The winds were running about 70 knots out there. We're working our way in. One Coast Guard surf boat trying to come alongside to give us some assist. It's been, I think, 18 hours since they uh, abandoned the pumps and uh, batten it down. Going through the breakers and they're coming across the south jetty. Waves coming clear over the top of my toe at this time. Of course, all at the same time, I'm having a problem with the, trying to keep the tug afloat. I've got too much tow line out, no way to take in. And a big one kind of hit the tow, and I could see this. I could see what was happening, knocked it clear down on the side. She came up, she sailed on by. My first instinct was to turn the tug and head to sea to try to check it before we pile up on the beach. Of course, when I did this and I checked the line, pressure of the pull almost sunk the tug, pull it clear down underwater. Things were so confused at this time. I come about and everything, everything seemed to kind of break for me all at once there. The Coast Guard surf boat and myself come alongside the tow and in the process we kind of made up to her and well we busted in one side of the tow, broke in one railing. The cutter rammed the side, busted some several planking, 
some of the ribs, but we did get made up there and start her in across the rest of the bar. The three of us tied in together, and finally we made through the entrance, through calm water into the Westport Harbor, where over 300 people were sitting there at 3 o'clock in the morning waiting to assist us. Probably uh, one of the greatest sights that I've ever seen. It's everyone in there trying to help and what can we do. So that's how it happened. I really don't like to tell this story because it is true. There's no way I can embellish it, exaggerate. It's just the true facts.